Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharpen today. I'm going to show you how you can paint for yourself at home, following along with this lesson, this gorgeous red barn sitting in wild flowers. Look at this great scene. So many flowers, so much joy. It's got that great sort of end of summer, early fall vibe to it. I really, really love it. Um, this is part of Acrylic August, which is a daily painting challenge that goes from August 1st to August 31st, where I meet every day with my community and we do a new painting together now you can just do this painting if you just wanted to paint this one barn because it looked fun and you don't want to do 31 other paintings that's completely cool and you can totally do that but if you're here for the challenge i want to congratulate you for completing yet another day and showing up and being ready to paint i cannot wait to hear all your stories about how much you've grown as artist and how many transformational moments that you've had that is my favorite part of this challenge now in the description down below you're going to find some more information it's going to have a complete list of my materials it's going to have the timestamps so you can tell how long the lesson is it's going to have a link to the traceable so if you don't want to draw this barn i'm going to show you how you can transfer that on um because i understand some Sometimes that can be like it's for weird reasons it's not always fun to transfer a box now to help me do all of this is my husband john hello he helps me bring these very involved amazing wonderful lessons to you by making sure that when i'm teaching something explaining something demonstrating something like how to paint these clouds that you can really see what's going on with one of our four robotic robotic cameras so there's really nothing else for us to do but get our paint get our brushes and come back because i'm legitimately going to show you how to paint this for yourself come on let's go so for today's class, we're going to be using an 8x8 canvas again. This is an Art Alternatives Classic Cotton Canvas. I really like this particular line of canvases between economy and quality. I, but you can use anything that you have. I'm just letting you know what I'm using. I've got Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, Thalo Green, Cad Yellow Medium, Cad Red Medium, Quinacridone Magenta, Thalo Blue, Deoxazine Purple. I have a little bit of Ultramarine Blue that I'm a direct paint on the canvas. I have Titanium White, and this little plop here is Satin Glazing Liquid. I may, not for sure, but I may optionally use some Fluid Acrylic Titanium White later in the lesson. Um, if I need to white line anything, so that might come up, but you can always thin the heavy bodied acrylic with water to get the same consistency and paint it out so you don't have to have that particularly. All right, since we're ready to have some fun, John, let's put up step one. It's a cinnamon joke. I expect this painting to have lots of people exciting to painting. I'm just going to put paint on my canvas. I'm going to just paint the whole thing ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue. Isn't that nice? Ultramarine blue. Now I'm going to mist it with water and I'm just going to go ahead and spread that out. You can paint it direct from the palette to the canvas. I'm just being silly. Sometimes I like to be silly. That's okay. Silly is a good thing. And I kind of like how it looks when we do the time lapses uh, with the squigglies to start. I don't know. It's fun. Not everyone is doing it. I just enjoy it. Yeah. And you can see this is just giving me a deep blue. Why would I pick this background for this painting is because we have rich colors in transparent pigments. So like down here in the greens, greens tend to be transparent and blues tend to be transparent and we have large fields of both. So by painting this blue to start with, it will help me get the depth I need on my canvas. I'm just making sure it's got the edges painted. And then right after this, what I'm going to do is rinse out my brush, dry it off with a towel, put it aside to be washed later, and I'm going to dry my whole canvas. Now, if you're painting along with me, what you're going to want to do is push pause when you start to dry and push play when you're finished drying. And that will keep us, whether it's live or premiere or replay, that will keep us painting together at the same time. So your drying time is actually my drying time. That being said, let's dry our canvases very thoroughly thoroughly and when we come back I'll show you what we do next. I'm going to come back to a one inch oval mop and I'm going to get a little bit of my glazing liquid on here. You would just do water if you don't have glazing liquid. Um, glazing liquid just slows down the drying time of the paint and extends its ability and improves its blendability. So I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue over to my white and I'm going to come here mid canvas and just start to brush out this lighter blue sky. See how we're doing right over the blue blue? 
We'll come back the opposite direction. We're just brushing this lighter, lighter blue sky coming up. Dust, 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 dust. Now I'm going to come in and get some just thalo blue and come from the top and brush that in. Sometimes I'll wipe my brush off during this blending process just so the pigment load is a little bit lighter. Soft little circular strokes to blend down. Blend down. sense. <laughs> Take the pigment. That's what we're saying. We're asking the paint to, to accept a pigment and it's saying maybe. We're just using a light brush stroke to create a blended sky. So yes, the glazing medium does help with this. You can also do this just working quickly wet into wet. I do recommend the glazing medium though for ease of ease of that. Now I'm going to want to rinse this out, put this to the side. I'm not going to dry anything. When we come back, I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so this is still wet. I'm going to go ahead and take a number eight Raphael. I get it, I get it a little bit moist. I take off the extra water with a towel. I'm going to come in and get some white pigment. And I'm going to come right here on the left-hand side, making little circular strokes start to... Talk about maybe a little distinctive cloud bank. And what I can do is I can kind of blend this down. Blend, blend, blend. 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 blend, blend. So we're just starting to create a lighter area that will be a cloud. Now I'll take it back past where I know my barn is going to be because I definitely, definitely want it to um, go behind the barn and come up here maybe. Some little, the begins. The begins of some up high cloud. Sometimes with glazing liquid, when it's semi-dry, it's a little bit tacky. And that just means it's getting closer to its drying space. That could be just that you're in very dry painting conditions on a particular day. I'm just picking up more white paint and working it out there. And that is okay. I could always just miss my canvas if I felt like I needed to improve that flow. Right now I'm just trying to paint the overall shapes, some thoughtful little shapes that could be clouds. Come back to my first cloud. Kind of definitely highlight that little edge there, as you do with clouds. Just keep blending this down. If it's giving you any lifting problems, then what you do is you dry and then paint it. If it's not working wet into wet for you and it's lifting up the under layer, let me get a little more. I'm going to wipe off my brush and get a little more white on here. There we go. Sure. A little bit of a dust here. Some clouds will come up behind the barn, right?
just dusting some clouds that are going to come up behind the barn. Still on the... This is my number eight Raphael de Artigny brush. Goodness gracious, I think I forgot to announce it at the beginning of the step. That's okay. We, we Number know. eight Raphael de Artigny brush. We now know. I'm going to put you in charge of asking me what brush that is because I keep forgetting to announce it. You're like, oh, great, because I'm not doing enough back here as it is. That's okay. We can, I can try to keep an eye on that. Yeah. Just blending this down into I know I'm going to have a barn and everything in front of this, and that's why I'm taking this down into the blend so that my cloud looks like it's part of a continuous sky. Now, every once in a while, I might need to rinse out my brush, dry it off with a towel, and come tackle this again. Wipe my brush out and then kind of just blend this down here. Just work it, work it, work it. We're going to have a nice big barn in front of most of this, so. Take a little bit of highlight there. You just come and highlight some of your clouds. Maybe a little bit of little flufter up here. Sometimes it helps to dust little flufters off a main cloud because they can be a little bit airy. See how we're doing flufters? Little bit here. Little bit here. Little flufters, little kisses of uh, just little tiny little fluffs of condensation that could be up in the sky. A lot of times we don't think to paint out the edges of our little clouds like this, tell these little more delicate stories. I'm just making sure the edges of my clouds have little bits that are going away from them. So it's just extra little attention that you give clouds when you know to give it. And look at how like more of a story that cloud story is by taking that extra step. Now, I'm going to want to dry everything thoroughly. And when we come back, I'm going to show you what we do next. We're going to have some fun. So now I'm going to take the traceable for this lesson and a bit of yellow Serol paper. So this is a special transfer paper. Serol is S-A-R-A-L. They're not like a sponsor anything in this video. They're just what we use as transfer paper. It works really well with acrylic paint. And I'm going to transfer this image on. I'm going to tape this down in four locations. Four locations. We tape it down. So that Not it is very tight, but four. four, right? And we tape that, we fix that down firmly, and then we're going to come here and very firmly draw over the lines. I'm go going back and forth. I want kind of a thick yellow line. There we go. 
So lots of ways to get something on to your surface. You can freehand it on. We've done that a few times. You can draw it on a separate piece of paper and then create a traceable, like is what I do here. You just work out your drawing on scratch paper. And then once you have it perfect, that's what you create the traceable from. You can use the traceable I provide for you, which is perfectly fine. I'm just really trying to press these lines down. If I did a good job, what I will have is a nice transfer. I'll check it this way. It looks good. The areas it might be hard to see is over the white, but it looks like we're okay. That's why I picked yellow so it would show over the white. Well, that makes sense, yeah. Now we're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to paint in the underpainting of this barn real fast, and then we'll come in and put our clouds in the rest of the way to the roof line. So that is our next plan, and to do that, I'm going to use a half inch brush. Shall we throw up a next step? Step five. All right, so I'm going to use a half inch angle brush, and for the main barn, I'm going to be using a mix of deoxazine purple and cad red. So this one I'm going to make quite dark because this is the far side. So I'll mix a lot more purple into here. I'm going to come under here and just paint along what I have. What I have. Now keep in mind we've got lots and lots of greenery that's going to be coming up over the barn. Lots and lots. So you want to paint this down a little bit so it we can layer it so that you can do delicate little patterns like we have up here and have the greenery show through. Maybe a little more red on this one. And I'm going to come along here. I may have to put my little ellipse back in. So I am darkening it with purple, but it's not quite as dark as the far side. I'll just paint this all in. Now if I feel fussy, I can try to come around my little ellipse and sort of hold its location. And this is just an underpainting, so it doesn't need to be perfect at all. You're just holding where the building is. And you're also giving it it's, it's a deep, deep shadow. All right, well, kind of lost my little lips there, but I can put it back in a little bit. And by leaving a little mark, I'll be able to find its location again pretty easily. Yeah. I'm going to brush this down, kind of like I did the dark. Come back into my dark purple. See how I straightened up that line? Yeah. We're just making sure that that's going down there. Now I'm going to rinse, rinse, rinse. And I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my phthalo green, and I'm going to go ahead and paint that roof in. And I might have brush strokes that are in the directionality of like how the shingles would be laid on the roof. These kinds of things do help. I think this is going to be one of my very favorite red barn paintings. Now just to come along here, I'm going to come along here with just a green. Steady as I can. Went a little high. If I go a little high, I'm going to rinse out, rinse out, rinse out, get clean water. 
and just erase. Boop. There we go. Now I'm going to want to take a little bit of black. Inside the little barn area here. Interesting other thing I'll do while I'm here. I'm going to take a little bit of my green and brown together. And I'm going to just start to paint this lower area with this dark green. Are you saying this? Yeah. So this is going to let us sort of help that layering right from the get-go knowing that we're doing it. Burn sienna, phthalo green. This will also help the areas underneath our flowers be dark enough to really show the shading. Now we'll be coming up here with a little hog bristle brush and creating an uneven line there. But right now we just want to kind of paint the underpainting. That I can see. Under painting, and I can kind of just move my brushy kind of way, it gives it uneven edges. But what's nice is you will have a barn showing through, and if you're at all concerned, you can come back and be like, brush, 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 brush. Oh, yeah, just have some additional barn there because this is just the underpainting anyway. This is just the underpainting, so we're literally just blending the two zones together. But if you wanted to give yourself more barn for later. Barn for later. You can barn it up. Just a little bit of later barn. Because we're going to put so many flowers over the front. Now dry everything. Bone dry. And when I come back, we'll show you what we do next. Now I want to kind of come here and improve the little clouds and everything that I've got. I'm going to come in and take my number eight Raphael Artany brush. And I'm going to begin to add A little more detailing down here. Can come very gently across this. And this is just making sure that behind the bar and that cloud feels fully realized, my friends. Yep. <clears throat> I'll come here and do the same thing I did before where I paint little floofed your edges. Yeah. Yeah, and that layers these clouds a little bit. See how that's very layered, and now you've got this complex oh. sky right behind your barn. I've got bushes and things here, but I'm going to just make sure that I've got a little more highlight right there, just so that when I put the bush there, it's, it's looking good. All right, drawing everything, and we'll start putting in more of our details when we come back. Now I'm going to take my number zero Raphael Textura brush, and I'm picking this one because it's about the width that I want my planks to be. So I'm picking a small brush. It's smaller than my pinky nail, right? That's going to give me nice uh, effects where I can make the, the little stripes that is the, the boards. I'm going to take a little bit of my CAD Red over to my Deoxazine Purple. And I'm going to mix a brighter red than the background, but still pretty dark because this, this is the side in the shade. And I'm going to come here at this little edge. And I'm going to brush down a little plank.
Just a little bit of a story there. I'll take this right up to my thing, then as I'm coming down, I might thin the boards as I come further away. And that's just because they would be yeah. a little more that in perspective as we went away. Let me get a little more red. this up to the roof line. We're going to have a nice big shadow that comes down, but it's nice to have the planks going all the way up. Dry brushing these down. Just so that this dark side of the barn, right, can have some texture and everything to it. Now, once I have that, I'm actually going to kind of paint a much darker contrast up here. I'm going to come through here and paint this a little bit darker so I can paint brighter reds in front of it. But I wanted to hold this before I came in and tried to move this at all. I might switch this over to an angle brush so that it doesn't take me so long to do this. I'm going to switch temporarily to an angle brush. But first, I'm going to take some black and paint in my lips here. Still using my zero D. If you don't have uh, access to a D, you just use a filbert or a small, um, like sharp, small, bright. The same sort of width would work for this. I'm yeah. going to kind of just real quick. Make a little brighter, a little red around the door so that I can come find it again later in its perspective. Now I'm going to take my angle brush and I'm going to go ahead and get most of this painted with like a little purple. That's just so that the little ribs have big contrast. Right, no, I get it. Now, my eye will be able to hold the ellipse, but it might be hard to see in the camera. Yeah, I, I just, uh, adjusted the camera there a little bit to just see, because uh, that's a very dark underpainting. It's very dark. Very purpley. It is. Just coming here and just doing this just real quick to make sure that it's in good, good little shape. While it's having a little bit of a dry... I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of my burnt sienna, phthalo green, a little cad yellow in it. And a smidge of white. And I'm going to come along the roof line. Try to keep my hand as steady as I can. Just because architecture tends to be straight, right? Paint a little green there.
Now I'm going to take a little bit of my red and my purple together. You could do this with red and black as well. Just starting to brush the little planks. Starting to see them come in. I'll just come along and try to piece those like fairly evenly across. <laughs> it's a subtle start. But we have a lot of good techniques to get us all the way there. To get those though, we really need to dry this. Now I'm going to take my number eight Raphael D'Artigny brush again. This is that hog bristle round and I'm going to get a little more of my burnt sienna and my phthalo green together. And we're going to come over here to the far side and much like we did clouds, we're going to tap up an uneven and irregular little line of background bush here. Could be bush, could be trees, not really critical what it is, you just want to make sure that that back line is an interesting and irregular little little one. Lots and lots of flowers will come in front of it so you can imagine that Is something in the background. Cut down some darker green. Just make it more dimensional. That looks good. We're doing pretty good. Now I'm going to want to take a number six Raphael sepia. Grab a little bit of my brown and black together and then some white. Let me wipe this off. I just want a very light color. This is this is sort of the white of the barn, but I don't want it to be white white because, you know, everything out here ages up. So around this, I'm going to want to put a nice little whiteboard. The other place I might want to have it, and I'll see if I can get it nicely rolled out. A little bit of a, a lips up there in the upper part regions of the barn. In the upper barn, upper peninsula of that barn. Now, take a little bit of this brown black and mix it in with my green. And I'm going to come here and dry brush a little bit of a patina on the roof. Kind of gray it out and age it out. <clears throat> and back into my D brush, I'm going to grab my red.
kind of paint the front slats of the barn in. I might actually come over here to the far side first. That's a very strong. Kind of come down at an angle along the roof line and then pull it down. So it's going to really red up the front of the barn. Right. Getting those front slats in. Right up to that front of that. See, we're just redding it up. Paint the little slats in. Paint the slats in. Yeah, the barn emerges. The barn emerges from... I mean, we came here for the flowers. Like, this could have been in my acrylic April bloom year. There's so many flowers in it, yeah. so... Yeah, I see that. You know, we're here for the flowers. The barn is secondary. <laughs> now, while I'm here letting the front of that dry... I'm going to take a little bit of my doxazine purple and my glazing liquid. I'm going to come along here and glaze a shadow. A purple shadow? I think I'm actually going to switch it to my half inch angle so that I can do a thinner. There you go. A so glazier shadow? A glazier shadow. I don't want it thick. I want to be able to see the details that I had made. It just should be in... We're just increasing the contrast, see, between the front and the side. Come underneath the roof here with a darker purple. Just for that little part of the shadow. Now I'm going to take my brush again, and I'm going to grab a little bit of my cad red with a little cad yellow. It brightens it just a little bit. And we're going to add some brightness to the front of the barn. Oh, that was a little much. Where I make, where if I overpaint, what I do is I'll clean my brush off, and then I'll come very carefully and subtract the paint. I may need to put the little circle back in. Just a little bit brighter on the front. Back to my white color for the window. Just make sure that I've got that there. Anywhere I need to clean up my work. This is a good time to do it. I can also come from the bottom up. There 
we go. We've got a lot of barn. Now, to do the next part, I really need to dry this thoroughly. Now that I've got the highlights on here, I want to come back and add some shadows. So I'm going to come back into my docks and my glazing liquid. And I'm going to come underneath the roof here. That comes back like this. If you don't have glazing liquid, you can thin your paint with water. You just have to allow it to dry much longer for it to cure. I do suggest having glazing liquid if it's possible. Sometimes it's not always possible. I don't always have it in my brush bucket. Never stopped me from painting before. I spent years of my life painting without it. Oh, I love that. That's looking really oh, good. Yeah, that does look good. That's what he needed. Now that I've got that, I'm going to get into my round brush. Take a little bit of my docks. I mean, my burnt sienna and my phthalo green. And I'm going to begin to add the bush line. This is a very dark shrubbery line shrubbery line but you can see that it's like it'll anchor in our our barn in our greenery now yeah see just allowing a little bit of the red to peek through I'm just kind of making this a little darker out here. A little greener. Using kind of rough, irregular strokes to sort of hide that little coloring on the background. Yeah. You know, when I have a little bit of this going, I can then add some of my cad yellow. I'm going to add some slightly lighter. Shrubbery. Shrubbery. Never underestimate the shrubbery. Much like the clouds, it's similar irregular little shapes. Right? We're trying to create little irregular shapes. Before we even kind of add little flowers in, we're just going, oh, what is it? What is it? I'm working, I haven't dried it, so I'm working a little bit wet into wet, so it's sort of blending on the canvas a bit. That won't happen all the way through here, so I'll have to lighten up my touch as I go across. This is all pretty dark still. a little bit of work. I 
and coming in and making little irregular shapes. Just sort of building up the background of the bushes. Yeah. Now what does help me is I have a large visual catalog or language set of bush and shrub. So I can just paint this out looking at it and being like, oh, that looks very shrub-like or that doesn't look shrub-like at all. Yeah. That is something that you get over time. You don't just have that day one. But you can have it. There's nothing you ever see me do on my paintings that you can't get to. Now, everybody has a different learning curve and everybody has certain things that come to them easily and other things that come to them hard and we're not cookie cutters of each other. And so those differences do make some variance in how you learn and how quickly you learn. But what I want you to understand is that you can learn it. Your journey may be different than somebody else's journey to learning it, but you can learn it. It is within you. It's If it's within me, believe you me, it's within you guys. You know, a lot of the difference between me and other people, I used to think, I used to believe it was that, you know, esoteric ephemera talent. You know, my mom was artistic. My grandmother was artistic. Right, I had artistic yeah. people on my dad's side. So it was like, oh, I'm artistic. Instead of, my mom just gave me tons of art supplies and gushed over my art. And there was a constant positive feedback loop in my life about creativity. And most people don't necessarily get that constant positive feedback. And in fact, many people unfortunately get criticism quite early in their creative development. And imagine if beyond you were getting the answer wrong in math, imagine if they just criticized you for getting the answer wrong. Right. How interested, how much less interested in math might you be? Right. And some of you may have even had that experience. Criticism does not help people become who they can be. No. Tearing people down doesn't. Man, I hate it. I hate the tearing of people down. It's just, it's something that I think is the saddest thing that's come out of the recent years is the way that we're all tearing each other down. And I know you guys come here for the break from that. And I'm so glad you guys take a break from that because it is just wild out there. Yeah. This is a nice place where we don't have to. Yeah. because And, and I would look, if I thought criticism would help you guys, I would criticize, but it really doesn't. It just delays your breakthroughs. It delays yeah. your joy. It delays everything that's good about painting and gets in your way. But if I can help you see the parts of your painting that you're doing well, where you're succeeding, that gives you the fire to keep going, you know? It's where we lift each other up that we're able to reach our full potential. Okay, let's dry everything. When we come back. We'll be very encouraging of each other. <laughs> and we will paint beautiful flowers because we can do that. All right, come back. We're going to paint some flowers. So now I'm going to get into my number six Raphael sepia. I'm going to put my vision enhancers back on because I realized there's no way I'm getting through this without them. I'm going to go ahead and put a little of my glazing liquid into the brush just to slow the drying time down of the paint. And I'm going to grab some yellow mixed into a small amount of red. Now this is where it is super important to have a good paint. If you go and you put the yellow out like I'm putting it out and it's like so transparent that all you see is the green underneath, you will have to go through and paint all the little yellow spots white first. And I'm sorry for that, but sometimes that's the only way to get around in expensive paint. These little marks are the distant little flowers that are far away. They're far, man. We just see little bloops. I might put some little bloops down here. Sometimes I like like to add little pops of yellow hidden in the greenery. Hide it in the greenery. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take um painting little flowers. little bit of red into my yellow. I 
I'm just working on the toe of the brush. And I paint the overall shape of the flower. Sometimes I paint the individual petals, but only if it's in a location close enough for me to see all the little petals. Or you're just mixing it up or something. Yeah, well, some of them will be bigger and be closer, and you'll see more of them. I'm getting away with this because, again, my paint, which is the Senelier acrylic, or if you were to use golden acrylic, or any of my recommended brands, you would have good coverage. Again, the trick for yellow, if you have bad coverage paint, is to paint it white first, dry it, and then paint over it. As it is, I'm still going to be doing two values of yellow out here. Some of these will have centers, some of them won't, because they'll be facing away. <laughs> it's a busy bit of kit. Painting all these yellow flowers. I think these are the most that we've done in a minute. Just a, just a couple little flowers here and there. It's okay. You can get through them. One flower at a time. That's kind of how it goes. Don't forget to tuck in small amounts of the yellow into your background. You're going to want to make sure that you face flowers opposite directions of each other as well. Some of them are more facing forward. Just touching little spots to show that stuff is stuck in the greenery. How are you liking this so far, John? I love it. It's fun, right? I hope you guys are liking this at home as well. you see me doing is just painting the overall shape of the flower just getting them blocked in mm -hmm. nothing to do but grow them in the garden i like how how like in you know, like especially here in ann arbor you they, they encourage you just to let them grow i love that just 
that just it's no mo was it all right let's no call that a step and then we'll come in and put the next flowers in so now i'm going to want to come in and add some highlights and put in some more flowers and to do that i am going to get my titanium fluid acrylic out and put it over here you could just add clean water to your white acrylic heavy body paint and thin it but i do find this to be more pigmented and it does make some of my work a little bit easier i'm going to continue on with my number six raphael sepia i'm going to take a little of my yellow over here and mix in some white making a very light bright ducky yellow and then i'm going to come through here and touch my flowers with some of this extra highlight. It just adds a little dimensionality. Can you see that there, John? Mm -hmm. How the two yellows. Yeah, it really makes it pop. Right, sometimes when we paint flowers, we want to paint every petal, everything, but actually what we can paint is the essence of the flower. That looks pretty good. Now that has some, some ooh, little dimensionality, little color. I'm going to put this aside for a second. And I think I'm going to grab um, this D brush, the number zero D. And I'm going to grab a little bit of my quinacridone and my white and I'm going to see if nope this is brush isn't going to do what I want it to do I have to really really force it I'm going to use a different brush I'll just go ahead and use my round brush I'm going to tap up and down, making little spike flowers. They're thicker at the base and thinner at the top. And they often come in little groups that you've got to paint in. Little quinacridone magenta and titanium white. Just putting in some little spike flowers. So this makes it feel like, you know, it's believable that there's this deep garden of lots and lots of stuff. I'm going to take a little bit of my purple over to my titanium white. I'm going to paint some little drop flowers. These are like a um, little daisy.
Just little purple flowers here and there. And then I'll also tuck some little bits of purple that are hidden in the greenery, right? Just painting the little Maybe come back to my uh, pink and white again. Little clumps of that. Might get a lot more white into this. Tap up a little bit of a highlight on the left side of the flowers. I'm creating some dimensionality. A little bit up on that inside there. And take a little bit of my cad red, my cad yellow. And add little orange centers to the purples. Little orange centers to the purples. And then while I'm here, I'm going to take a little bit of my black and brown together. Load some up on the toe. Come in the center of some of the little yellow flowers that are out here. And that just adds a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, we're going to want to dry everything. Dry, dry, dry. Dry, dry, dry. 
Now we're going to paint a lot of botanical detail without actually painting the botanical detail. It's an interesting thing. We're going to take a little bit of our burnt sienna over to our thalo green. Bring that over to our cad yellow. And we're going to make a nice green gold up here that's very light. Might grab a drop of clean water and sort of work that in. Or I can grab, uh, sometimes interestingly enough, glazing liquid will help improve the flow. I grab a little of my white. More yellow. It's a very specific bright color. I'm going to get just on my toe. I'm going to make little leaf marks and little twig marks. Maybe a little more white on here and yellow on here to I want it to be opaque. What I'm doing is rolling out the extra pigment so my brush isn't overloaded. Mm -hmm. See how that very quickly starts to make? Yeah. It really, really does. tend to focus it where I already kind of had some highlights going on, but you can put some in the shadow. Just little marks to fill out the greenery. Just pushing little leaves here and there through the whole bit. I just work this and try to fill this all in. Some of it can go off the canvas. Little bits of little leaves here and there. Just throwing little marks. Still using my number six Raphael sepia brush. It's just a good round. You just want to find yourself a good round with a sharp point. This is a particularly good one, which is why I like it. Just make sure that there's just a good amount of like marks. Mm
looks like here and there. Lots of little busy, busy marks. We'll rinse that out. Put this to the side. I'm going to grab a number zero detail brush. I'm going to take a bunch of my fluid acrylic over to this green. Some yellow into it. And I'm going to, interestingly enough, sign on this side because it's the quietest side to sign on. Oh yeah, I can see that. All right, when we come back, I am going to tell you what we're going to do next. Well, after you have painted all your flowers and all your little leaves and done all your little busy work and signed it, the best thing that I would love you to do is to share your finished painting with me. Hashtag the Art Sherpa, hashtag Acrylic August. I'm on all the social media platforms that you might expect. I am also on Facebook with two private groups. One is Acrylic April. That's for if you're doing this in acrylic and you're coming along with the challenge, that is a great group to share it in. That is that is for this challenge only. And then also there's the Art Sherpa Fish which covers any of my getting close to 3,000 lessons um, that I have online. So anytime you do a lesson with me, that's a great place to share it. And I recommend those places because they both have really good communities. Um, another place is, is you can come follow me on Patreon. You don't even have to Patreon me. You can follow me for free. And there's a cool chat over there. You can share some paintings and talk with me a little bit. And then, of course, there's our Discord. Uh, signing up for our newsletter is a good idea over at theartsherpa.com. So these are all things that you can do to continue on with your painting journey and really enjoy what you've been doing with me. Um, other than that, there's really nothing for you to do but to be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I will see you at an easel real soon. Bye-bye!